Qu'est-ce que je vais me faire Un petit café ah, je... Are you scared you'll be attacked when overlanding and stopping overnight for camping? This is the kind of question we get asked quite often. So how to be safe or feel safe when overlanding? Easy. We always keep this little one loaded and ready to use. No, just kidding. We don't take any guns when overlanding. We just keep them for the internet trolls. No, to be serious, you shouldn't take any weapons when overlanding, especially if you're not trained to use them in a stressful circumstance. Let's get into the topic. Depending on where you live or travel, this kind of question wouldn't even hit your mind a second. I mean, overlanding through inhabited areas, how is it possible to feel unsafe and needing to think about securing your camp for the night? We're not talking about animals here. I digged a little into the subject and I will give you my personal opinion. If you're still here with me, please add a thumbs up to this video and also comment below if yes or no, you already had an unsafe situation happening to you when overlanding or free camping. Go on, comment. I'm waiting. Let's start with the core questions. Why do we travel this way and what do we like about this way of traveling? We have always traveled alone, together, with friends, no friends, whether on foot, by motorcycle or by car, with or without the children, it doesn't change much our way of doing or being while well out there. Minimum organization, only what's necessary, and we let the journey guide us. We are more solo overlanders and we don't really like to mix up with groups. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We love meeting people during our trips because they are part of the best memories, but we don't feel the need to travel with a group to reassure ourselves and feel secure. This is clearly why we have always traveled alone without using any agencies or even road books. We prefer this feeling of freedom when we travel, the one that allows us to go where we want, at the pace we want, without being dependent on other people or on an organized schedule. Now, is it irrational to feel unsafe or insecure when free camping? If you're afraid to be alone in the night, isolated place and that this situation generates in you an irrational fear, because yes, this fear is irrational, then it's that you're simply not made for this type of solo travel. Yes, that was a little straightforward. To be honest, it depends on a few factors. If you are completely new to overlanding and free camping, you might feel a little out of your element in the beginning. Over time, it becomes easier and being outdoors at night becomes the new normal. But what if this doesn't happen? I mean, what if you always feel uncomfortable while trying to find a place to stop overnight and free camp in inhabited areas or in the middle of a forest? In my opinion, this is the irrational fear hitting in. Simply because you imagine that someone will come and attack you in the middle of the night to steal from you or hurt you. Yes, it can happen. There are bad people everywhere. But let's face reality. This is more likely to happen when on a campground or with a group, since you have a whole bunch of people you may not know and who could have bad intentions. On the opposite, when camping in an isolated place where you haven't seen anyone for several kilometers, you will surely have less chances to meet someone with bad intentions who could be checking out your vehicle and gear. Before going further in my explanation, I want to add here that if you don't like solitude or if you don't feel comfortable free camping in the middle of nowhere, please follow your instinct and continue to do it the way you like it and the way you feel doing it. The goal is to enjoy and not to create more stress than in an everyday life. And also, I'm not saying that our way of doing is the best and that it should be done like this. I'm just here to point out that the fear of attracting any kind of trouble when free camping alone or as a family in the middle of an inhabited area is very often irrational. However, we are not aware of the potential dangers especially as parents, but I think that it's important and necessary to put things into perspective and make the difference between a rational and an irrational feeling of insecurity.
I want to share with you one of the many different experiences we lived while traveling abroad with our Land Rover Defender. If you already went in countries that have been in war or are very poor, for example, you maybe noticed that we are unconsciously more suspicious of the locals because we think they might be jealous of our wealth. But the reality is quite different. During our trip in the Balkans, we followed the trail in Bosnia to find a place to camp. In this country, you still have to be careful with landmines, even if the situation has changed a lot. After a few kilometers, we found a little less frequented place to set up our camp on the side of the road up in a mountain. Once installed, we met a couple who was going down the road with their 4x4. They had obviously rarely or never seen travelers there before, and they were surprised we were going to camp there just on the side of the road. The discussion was a little complicated because they didn't speak English at all, but we managed to understand each other. They weren't trying to warn us or trying to make us leave the place. They were leaving their holiday a weekend home and they offered us to stay in their garden. We started to cook and then there were these two people who stopped by, asked, asked how we were and what we were doing. Well, kind of difficult because they didn't really speak in English but we did understand them and they understand us so it was a really nice couple and they offered us to come and stay with the car a bit further where we were and that was that's their home in fact. They did so out of pure kindness and opened their doors, even letting us use their outdoors wash basin for dishes and their pavilion. This is exactly the kind of encounter we like, meeting locals. This kind of things rarely happen if traveling with a group. We would have been looking for a bigger place and wouldn't have settled in that kind of isolated place on the side of the road. It's also for these reasons we always try to have the most minimalist vehicle slash camp possible. This allows us to have a small footprint and to settle in a very small place, for example in a forest between many trees, without needing a huge surface on the ground. I would say that you should always be vigilant and do your best to know when a situation isn't safe, but you shouldn't fall into paranoia and think that a place like a campground, for example, will ensure more security than an isolated place in the middle of nature. Personally, it's even the opposite. I now feel much more serene and safe when no one is around. But before that, I had a hard time convincing myself that this kind of fear is irrational. Because when we sleep under the stars, we tend to be more alert and overthink when we hear noises. But I think it simply comes from the fact that we watch too much TV and that our brain plays tricks on us. It's just like going for a swim in the sea after watching Jaws. As soon as you step in the water, you hear the famous music in your head and fear something will happen. We only need to adopt logical reflexes. It's simply a matter of choosing the right places where you set up your camp. Be aware of the environment so that you can better detect or sense a situation that could turn bad with rationality. Finally, I think that when we travel, we often realize that people we meet are often much less bad intentions than those we meet in our daily lives. This is why, in my opinion, we often have a false image of the unknown and that's also why those questions often pop up. Most of us are city dwellers or live near big cities where incivilities or criminality is often greater than in the countryside. For these reasons, we rather used to be in defense mode against the unknown, which is a good thing in itself. But it's above all necessary to know how to let go and enjoy all the moments that an overlanding trip brings while still keeping a critical sense and instinct of protection. Okay, now if you think it's unreasonable to travel this way without any personal safety, would love to read you in the comments. And also let us know if you have any travel stories related to personal safety. Hope you enjoyed this video, add a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye!
Laisse info. Mmh. Mmh.